fever clinics have now begun uh, on, in earnest uh, all around the country. We've been talking about it, that the fever clinics uh, in Lotoka, uh, you know, Punjins and Kamakamila Health Centre. In the Greater Suba area, we have uh, four fever clinics. Lavi is also open, Valilev is now running, and uh, as I've alluded to, within the next uh, 16 to 24 hours, we'll have one in the Greater Suba area that we've identified is currently being scoped. The whole reason of the fever clinic, I has to say again, is for anybody having flu and fever, because it's also the flu season, uh, to present themselves to the fever clinic so that we can demarcate if uh, that patient or that person has a likelihood of a normal flu at this time or whether that person has a possibility of having COVID-19. And uh, again, as I've said, this is a mechanism to also ensure that we uh, predict those who may have uh, you know, flu or COVID-19, but also it is a mechanism also, also pre prevent, uh, preventing and also protecting our frontline health workers at uh, the main institutions like CWM, uh, for example, so that uh, we ensure that the patients that do get through to them are those who are needing other forms of care. Thank you. Are there any questions that uh, for the Ministry of Health before I hand over to the Commissioner of Police? Well, with regards to some of the names that have come out on the list that's been supplied, there's been some issues uh, where people have already said they've reported to the Ministry and they need to appear on that list. We've, uh, certainly within the last uh, 18 hours or so, we've uh, cleaned that list at least three times. It's been cleaned again, uh, certainly because there were uh, persons that uh, had informed us, but certainly that hadn't come through to the incident management team. Uh, but more importantly, we've had a lot more people that have contacted us or their families have contacted us because of the list. Uh, the list is actually, as I said, it's been uh, again being processed as we speak. We now had about uh, 37 people from the 84 that we have yesterday. Uh, I can also say that at this moment uh, in the Northern Division, there were four people that were thought to be within the Northern Division. All of them have been checked out. All of them, uh, uh, three of them have actually left our shores and gone back. So that has been quite useful per se. But certainly um, from our point of view, it has helped. Uh, there were glitches, certainly from our part, in uh, not connecting the dots in the incident management team and the people on the ground. But there's been a significant number of, uh, of uh, Fiji people uh, that we would like to contact. And as I said before, they don't have COVID-19, but they are within the incubation period. It was important to make sure that they were being isolated and that we were looking at them uh, with purpose for the 14-day period. How do we ensure that uh, we're looking purpose with them? We have our teams that come to the, visit them at least once a day, they're in contact with them on the phone, and also we work uh, with police to make sure that uh, uh, that they are not uh, you know up and about in the community. It's also very helpful uh, for those who are listening, who are family members of those who who are in isolation because they've travelled in uh, uh, recently or because they've been a contact of that index patient or the current patient that we have. That we also encourage them to follow the rules of isolation and the rules of home self-quarantine that we have in place. So with regards, with regards to isolation wards, uh, would you be able to tell us how we, uh, just now with confirmed cases and people in isolation in uh, Lotoka, Randi, and Nabua, uh, could you tell us how many people, uh, how many or what is the capacity of people that could be isolated in these three centers and how many people are isolated? So the uh, the teams that have actually, so the incident management team, which is uh, being managed by its general manager is uh, Dr. James Fong. This is a project management team, so it's like an NDMO type team specifically for COVID-19. It has uh, secondees and also uh, specialists that have come to join the team, but also from within other stakeholders within government. They've uh, made sure that in terms of planning with the divisional teams, that we have the isolation facilities, but the opportunity to actually surge into other areas. For example, we have an isolation facility that's available in Nandi and also in uh, in Nabua, but also we have an isolation unit at CWM for those who may be very, very sick. So the patient, the index patient that, uh, in, uh, in Lotoka, when he was seen, he was then taken into the isolation unit within Lotoka Hospital. That has a capacity of about 30 beds per se. The one in Suba, they have a capacity to go up to 44 beds. 
In Nandi, they have the capacity to go up to about 15 to 20 beds, and also in Labu, about 15 to 20 beds. But apart from that, the opportunity is to keep on searching. So the search plans are in place. Uh, so if your thoughts are that we would run out of, a, uh, of an opportunity to isolate people who may have COVID-19 or, so, or those that are suspected to have COVID-19, we will never have that scenario. Because certainly within government, and other government stakeholders, there are government facilities, but we're also looking at other areas where we might be able to surge into. What other areas would you surge into? Should we get to a situation where we have a lot more patients than the 100 or so, if my math is correct? that you're prepared to look after right now. What do you mean when you say you have other areas you can search into? Well, certainly we've been talking within other uh, government agencies. That's, 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 that's what we need to do, uh, and looking at all facilities that are available to us. But again, this is something that the incident management team have put around. And at this moment in time, the isolation units and units that we have are more than sufficient for the needs that we have. And as I've said yesterday, our aim is to keep it that low. We need collectively as a nation to keep it that low. We can't have community transmission on a chaotic and uncontrolled scale that some other countries have, some first, you know, uh, some high income countries. We can't. So, of course, we've planned around those areas, but collectively we need to be pushing the issues around, you know, isolation, containment, social distancing, so we don't have that peak that other countries have. Minister, uh, both of the, the imported infections that we've got now, the two, have come in undetected through your screening uh, mechanisms at the airport. Um, are you worried that maybe other people might have made it through from the US or Australia? Are you, have you got any other initiatives where you're looking at, at other flights that have come in? We, the Honourable Prime Minister has made a statement that as of tomorrow there'll be, you know, the flights would have grounded per se. So the likelihood of that ha happening is uh, unlikely. For those that have come in from before, we have the health declaration card in which we they have filled out, they have a tearaway portion. We keep on pushing out in the media and the social media that if they have any symptoms, they are to call. They should be on home isolation. So certainly they should be in home isolation. And if they have any symptoms, they do call us. And that's what's happened with this case, which to us seems like a model case because he's certainly followed all the, the rules that we have in place. Um, with the release of names being effective in tracing down these people, um, does the ministry think we should have released these names earlier? Certainly at that time we followed due process in what we normally do in terms of contact tracing because the challenges we have faced and it was on to day four or day five, we felt it was in the best interest of the nation and in the safety of the nation that we actually released the names. And it, it had the, the effect of being able to bring people or to contact us or families to actually guide us. Remember, some of those that mm, the names have been crossed off the list, other people have said, look, I'm the family of so-and-so, or I'm the neighbor of so-and-so. So it has led us to actually do that. And I'm asking the nation, we need to show leadership and responsibility at this very important time. If you're asked to contact, please contact. If you're asked to be isolated, please be isolated. If you know somebody who needs to be isolated and they're not isolating themselves, please let us know. Because this is, as the Honorable Prime Minister said, this is not normal times. And I've said it before and he said it also today. To us, we value life as being priceless. And we must value our lives. We may not value our own lives, but we must value the life of others. Thank you.